Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video we're going to create a simple sprite animator. Let's get started. Okay, so I have my basic scene here, and in my textures I have a walk sprite sheet which contains four frames of animation. Since this animation is based on frames, we want to display frame 1, then frame 2, frame 3, etc. So in order to set up our sprite, to support frame animation, let us change our sprite mode to multiple, hit apply, and on my sprite editor, go into slice by cell size, and this sprite sheet contains frames that are 170 in width and 256 in height. So slice it, and there you go, I got my first frame, second frame, third frame, and fourth frame. Okay, hit apply, and okay. Our sprite sheet and frames are now correctly set up. So let's make a new C sharp script and name it Sprite Animator. So in here we want to cycle through an array containing all of our frames. Let's set up that array, which will be a private sprite array and call it frame array. We're also going to need to store the current frame that is being displayed. So a private int current frame. And we need a timer to store the time that the current frame is being displayed. So private float time. Okay, now on our private void update, we are going to, first of all, increase the timer by time dot delta time. And in here for now, let's just make one frame per second. So if timer is bigger than one F, then timer minus equals one F, and we're going to increase our current frame. So after one second, we're going to reset the timer and increase our current frame, and then display our current frame. So get component of type sprite renderer dot sprite. It will be on the frame array in the sprite that is in the index current frame. Okay, so we are increasing our frame every second and displaying it. Let's see what it looks like. Back into our scene here and create a empty game object. Let's say our sprite animator. Going to drag our script. And in here, we actually need to make this serialized so that we can set up in the editor. So there we go, I have my frame array. And here, just a bonus tip you can lock the current inspector while you select all your sprites and drag them in there. Add the sprite render so we can display our sprite. Let's start off by displaying our first sprite. There's my object. And let's see it. There you go, first frame, second frame, third frame, fourth frame. And now it crashes because we went array index out of range. Okay, so let's make sure that when it reaches the final one, it resets back to frame zero. So in here, instead of just increasing the current frame, we're going to have current frame equals current frame plus one and then get the remainder of the division by the frame array dot length. So this way, when current frame reaches frame array dot length, which in this case is four, it will automatically reset to zero. Okay, let's see if our animation is now correctly looping. Okay, there you go, first frame, second frame, fourth frame, and yep, exactly. It is now working correctly. Okay, great. So now instead of increasing every second, let's make our frame rate into a variable. So make a private float frame rate and let's say 100 milliseconds. And in here, instead of testing bigger than one second, let's just test if it is bigger than frame rate and decrease by that amount. Okay, let's see it. Okay, there you go. It is now running at 100, changing frames every 100 milliseconds, which equals 10 frames per second. Now let's clean our code and make it a bit more performance by storing a reference to our sprite render so we don't have to constantly do get component on every update. So up here, a private sprite renderer, call it sprite renderer, and we're going to grab it on void awake. We're going to make sprite renderer equals game object dot get component of type sprite render. Okay, and now in here, Instead of constantly using get component, we're just going to use our cache sprite render. Great. And there you have it, a very simple class that takes a set of frames and plays them sequentially. 
As always, you can download the project files and utilities for free from unitycodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Okay, see you next time.